Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a tag video created by the beautiful Samantha March here on YouTube. Oh my gosh, she is like, is she like a YouTube OG right now? I can, I feel like I've been watching her for a while and she's been on YouTube for a while and she created this like top five, bottom five. She usually does, that's how she does her favorites videos, right? She does like her top favorites. She, or I think she does it by brand, um, but she decided to turn this particular idea into a tag where you basically talk about your top five favorite brands right now and your top, um, your bottom five like brands that like you used to like but don't really excite you, blah, blah, blah. Either way, I thought it was a great idea, plus I love tags. Plus I saw a bunch of my friends film it, so I didn't want to be left out. And I started making a list on my phone and I honestly have like 12 brands per like top five and bottom five. So I thought I'll just do a few, I'll do five. And then if I, you know, if you guys really want to hear about the rest of them, I'll just do different videos at another time just so we don't all get bored. Yeah, let's get into it. So let's do bottom five first because let's save up the good stuff for, for later. So my first bottom five brand um, is NARS. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel sort of guilty for saying this because NARS was like one of my first loves. Orgasm blush, like I hit pan on an orgasm blush and I still love their casino bronzer, um, their sheer glow foundation I wore on my freaking wedding day. Like me and NARS, we go way back. So I'm really, really um, kind of like, I so I really love the brand, but I feel like a lot of their new releases like I just don't know like who asked for this so like the orgasm collection where they did the, like the beautiful packaging with the cream products like who asked for that like I don't have time for that like do you guys have time for a cream highlighting palette on a daily basis because I sure as heck don't so a lot of their palettes recently I feel like they're beautiful but it's like oh my god we've seen this before we've seen this before um, there's so many shades of brown or they just have really beautiful packaging and then once you get into the product it's not the greatest product I would love to see them do um, more thoughtful collections I would love to see them do a colorful palette I think that will be epic. Um, their formula is very simplistic in the sense that it's not very opaque. I think it's definitely more of like a wear every day, but you don't want to look like you have a lot of makeup on, which is nice sometimes. But yeah, I just don't love their eyeshadow formula. I'm rambling like a crazy person. I definitely prefer their face products, but even their face products, I just haven't seen anything new enough where it's like, grabbing my attention or making me do a double take so I'm really just really hoping NARS finds its mojo again and then the next brand I would say is Morphe and don't get me wrong I used to buy so much Morphe because I was on like the Jacqueline Hill gravy train I wanted to buy everything that she recommended and there are so many beauty gurus. I used to follow a lot of the bigger beauty gurus and they used to all love Morphe. Morphe, Morphe, Morphe. We all loved Morphe and then I just kind of like fell out of it. I finally realized like they were all so full of shit and they were promoting these products because they got paid which is totally fine like make your coin but I don't need to do everything that a big beauty guru do does like to fit in or anything like that. So I definitely stopped drinking the Kool-Aid with Morphe and I still buy their products like I really like their liquid lips somebody gave me the James Charles palette for my birthday like I still have plenty of Morphe products in my collection like I don't think that everyone that buys a Morphe product should like combust but I just don't get the constant hype I also have a lot of Morphe brushes I do think they're worth it because not everyone can afford to spend like 40 50 bucks on a makeup brush so I like that there is a low-end product that kind of does the job and if you need to replace a brush every couple weeks <laughs> so what like so affordable so I do like Morphe in that aspect but a lot of their new stuff I'm just like mm, next um, <laughs> another brand that I used to love 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 that's definitely my bottom five these days is the is Urban Decay and you guys when I say I loved Urban Decay like they were my brand like I went to an Urban Decay counter in 2009 and bought so much Urban Decay like my poor little college budget like I don't know what I was doing I think I got my tax return actually and so this guy like did my makeup and I got all this Urban Decay and like Urban Decay was my favorite brand 
everything I wore was Urban Decay and now I'm just like, what happened to Urban Decay? I swear like all of their palettes, I don't know, I just think I fell out of love with their formula. I, it's hard for me to explain like what my favorite formula is, I think, um, to just a, a regular person, but like my favorite formulas are buttery. Like I love a good buttery matte. I love the color that's in the pan to show up on my eye. And I love to be able to blend and blend and blend. And I love a shimmer that I like put my brush in, drag my brush, and then I rub <laughs> the eyeshadow on my eyelid and it's nice and opaque and I don't need to wet it. Like those are my favorite formulas. And I just feel like Urban Decay has gotten so far away from that. Um, and maybe it's okay for other people. That's what other people like. That's totally fine. But the last palette I tried from them, I like had a little like nostalgic moment for the naked reloaded and i bought it and i was just like why did i just do that like it was the biggest waste of money so i don't know i'm i'm thinking i might buy the game of thrones palette just because i like the idea but i feel like i'm gonna be let down so i'm like karen maybe you should just stay away from it but let me know what you guys think i feel like i'll be like terribly disappointed if i buy something from urban decay um anytime soon so the next brand I want to talk to you guys about is Becca Cosmetics, and I used to love Becca Cosmetics also, again, because probably Jaclyn Hill and her collab, and, you know, Becca was, like, so lit, and she did, like, Champagne Pop, and she was always recommending their products and their bronzers. Not their bronzers. She used to love their blushes. She used to talk about um, one of their blushes all the time. So I actually have a lot of the Becca shimmering skin perfectors in my collection and it's so funny how little hype they get nowadays um but yeah I, I really liked the brand I really really did and then I feel like they didn't really keep up with their hype I think the shimmering skin perfectors are beautiful but I feel like you can only make so many shimmering skin perfectors I think that you know it would be nice for them to branch out into more like eyeliners and doing stuff like that um, maybe coming out with some eye pencil like crayons like Laura Mercier does because that would be fun like a champagne pop one and like some of their fam famous highlighters that would be cool but yeah I feel like they're like one of those one trick pony brands um, that everyone used to talk about and now nobody is really looking for them even their foundation was good like their aqua luminous foundation is so so good um, I haven't worn it in a long time, but I remember owning it and really liking it. And um, even some of their bronzers are really nice. So they make a really good face product, but they're definitely one of those brands that has definitely lost my attention and I'm definitely not checking for all the time. So the last brand I want to talk about that is in my bottom five is MAC Cosmetics. And MAC honestly was one of those brands, I think, growing up, in another country everyone still knows about MAC and like I never really wore makeup when I was a kid um so I never had like a lot of lipsticks or anything like that but once I moved here I still was like oh MAC MAC MAC's like the the brand like everyone's buying it and you couldn't buy it in my town because there's no MAC store where I live uh, but anytime I could get a lipstick I would or like I had a huge cream lipstick collection from MAC and then I remember when I went to New York City for the first time I bought like my first MAC lipstick in what was the shade uh I can't remember what it was like this pink shade and she's like oh this would be perfect with your skin so I bought it and like I used to be so into MAC all their limited edition collections like there was one time literally me and Rail were driving to a wedding and the MAC collection with Gambitsa Volley came out I think it was like the where the the caps were like the same color as the lipstick on the inside and I remember we were driving and I had bad cell service and I was like freaking out because I was like no collection's gonna sell out like seriously like who gives a fuck and I definitely remember like rail installing something on my computer so that if like Mac updated something on the page like it will ping me because like that's how psychotic I used to be about picking up their limited edition <laughs> collections and I'm not gonna lie I kind of am low-key interested in the Aladdin collection but I'm not gonna break like rest trying to buy it or spend like an arm and a leg if I'm able to get it I might get it but yeah, it's just like I don't really like grab for MAC as much as I used to and it's okay. It's fine, but 
yeah, I just remember them being a brand I really, really loved. Okay, so now on to positive things. Let's talk about my top five brands. The first one I have to talk about is Pat McGrath, you guys. I love Auntie Pat so, so much. <laughs> I really, really do. I love her eyeshadows. I love her eyeliner pencils. I love her lipsticks. I love her lip gloss. There's not a whole lot I don't like from her. Um, I'm not as intensely into buying everything from her as I would say my friend Kat from Rented Fashion. She owns like every single piece of Pat McGrath makeup. Um, I'm not that intense and I don't really have the budget to buy everything she comes out with but everything I have from her I love. I love 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 and I'm so excited to see what her brand is gonna do next. Um, I talk about her so much I feel like I'm gonna bore you guys to death so number one favorite top five brand is Pat McGrath. Next one, honestly, this is kind of embarrassing, but I have to say ColourPop because as much as we all shade on ColourPop for coming out with something every other day, I still love like their innovation. I love that they do such fun, cool things. Their new palette is just my luck palette. Like they came out with a green palette. Like, thank you. Um, it's my pleasure is a great palette. I love their new jelly much shadows. I bought quite a few of those. Um, those are so fun. I love their lipsticks, their blushes, their single eyeshadows. I have like tons of their single eyeshadows. Like don't buy any more single eyeshadows from them. Um, they're always doing something fun and exciting and I just love their vibe. And I love that they're made in America and they're so affordable. So I feel comfortable recommending them and knowing that most of you are able to try them out or if you can buy them full price, they always have a good sale or a good coupon code. And yeah, I'm just so excited to see what ColourPop does next. And you guys, I'm so excited to film my 2019 ColourPop recap video. I think that that video is gonna be so long because they're already, what, it's like April and they've already come out with like eight eyeshadow palettes. So that video is gonna be really fun to film for me this year, I think. Okay, the next brand that I'm always checking for is Juvia's Place. I love Juvia's Place. I remember Juvia's Place when, like, I don't think it was as hyped as it is now. Um, the first time I heard a YouTuber talk about Juvia's Place was Coffee Break with Danny, and she had got the Nubian 2 palette, and this was, oh, this was when Juvia's Place only had two palettes. They had the Nubian 1, and the Nubian too. And I was like, what is this stuff? And she was like swatching it and the shadows look so beautiful and buttery. And I was like, what is this like hocus pocus? Like I've never heard of Juvia's Place. I need to find out, I need to go right now. So I went to their website and the Nubian two was sold out and the Nubian one was there. And I was like, okay, let me buy that quick. Um, you know, coincidentally the Nubian is not my favorite. I actually ended up decluttering it this, last year when I was going through my stuff um but oh my god they're such a good brand like if it's like if you were watching this and you haven't tried Juvia's Place yet like I don't know what you're waiting for literally one of the best indie brands they're sold at Ulta now so you can get it Ulta but honestly trust me like if you buy a Juvia's Place palette you're not gonna want to return it it's so so good the new tribe palette the all green palette is so good I'm so excited to see what the next warrior palette is they're coming out with foundations I think they're doing concealers I can't remember exactly but I'm just I'm so excited for that brand I just love their products I love their price point such a good brand so excited always checking for them I am always checking for them. Okay, number four on my list of top five brands is Sydney Grace. I love Sydney Grace so, so much. Oh my God, the other day I was sitting and playing with their April like Fools No Joke bundle that they did, which was a dupe for the Tarte Icy Betch palette before the Tarte Icy Betch palette came out. And their shimmers are so beautiful. Their butter, like their mattes are so buttery. Like I, I just can't. Um, I haven't really tried a whole lot of their like face products. Um, I have tried their cream shadows and I think those are lovely as well but honestly I think they're like shining star like their A plus products are their eyeshadows and I would encourage 
all of you to try them. I will film a video showing you my single collection. I want to show you guys all my eyeshadow singles and there's a lot of Sydney Grace, not as much as like some other YouTubers have, but I feel like I have an extensive collection and it's a lot of the colorful <laughs> shadows from them. So I'm so, so happy with that brand. Their customer service is amazing. Their owners are so, so sweet. Their new eyeshadow palette that they came out with last year called Autumn Drain is perfect if you don't like to buy singles. But honestly, single shadows are so fun because you can just buy your own magnetic palette and make your own, you know, eyeshadows if you have like a unique creative perspective on life. It's such a cool way to, you know, kind of express yourself and make your own palette. So I have to say Sydney Grace is definitely a brand that is constantly exciting me, constantly innovating, and I just love their formula so, so much. Okay, number six. I have to give this one to Fenty Beauty. Like I said, I had like 12 brands listed under my top five, but I feel like Fenty Beauty is kind of that rebel brand that Honestly, fuck the game up for everyone with a medium to deep skin tone. I feel like people, brands weren't taking medium and deep skin tones as seriously as they do now because of Fenty. I'm, I could be wrong, like if you guys disagree with me, I'd be totally happy to hear your point of view, but I feel like after Fenty came out with like the 40 something shades, everybody started coming out with like a wide range and I know there were some brands that already had a large range of shades like Estee Lauder and Makeup Forever but I feel like that's their problem like if they didn't promote that that's on them um, I personally never really enjoyed any of Makeup Forever's formulas but the Fenty foundation ooh, I love it so much I'm waiting for the summer because it's like matte but it just like doesn't like suck the life out of my skin. I love it so much. I love her highlighters. I like her lipsticks. I think she's so innovative. I just love her concealer. I'm wearing that today. Um, her new bronzers are dope. So I'm so, so excited to see what Fenty does next. Even her eyeshadow palette is really good. I bought it and I ended up decluttering it or selling it or something, but that palette is so good. I think it's called the Moroccan Spice Palette. I don't know if a lot of people talked about that palette when it first came out, but I did an eye look with that palette on my YouTube channel and I thought it was a really nice eye look. Like I was tan and it was like blue and red and it was gorgeous. So I'm so, so excited to see what Fenty comes out with next. I think she's honestly changed the scale of what we expect from brands these days. I think a lot of makeup brands are trying harder, pushing to be more inclusive and I think that Fenty does get some credit for that. So those are my top five and my bottom five makeup brands. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't seen Samantha March, I'm gonna link her video down below. And if you haven't created this video yet and you are a YouTuber, I tag you. Um, please make this video. I'd love to see it. And I will see you guys in my next one. And um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.